If the painting is complex, a regular block-in will add unnecessary frustration to your workflow. That's why sometimes I'll just jump straight into secondary shapes. I'm Roy, let's get started. What's the difference between a block-in and a secondary shape block-in? Like a regular block-in, I'm going to try and keep large value shapes together. Where this type of block-in separates itself is adding color notes depending on the smaller secondary shapes. What I'm usually thinking is, does this shape look warmer or cooler? You can do whatever you would like, just keep the values together. We're going to carry that color over into this shape over here. That's going to be the vast majority of that. I am mixing up some of this color, only slightly warmer and slightly lighter. All right, this next batch of color that we're going to put down is going to be a little bit more out in the open. Slightly different type of grass, a little type of shrubbery. Let's go with making this just slightly redder, slightly redder tint. Let's see how this does. Yeah, that's about right. Let's go ahead and make some marks. Try to be precise with your shapes and colors, not accurate. Accuracy takes longer. You want them to relate well to each other. So what I'm gonna do is put down the snow peeking through all these tree bases covering the side of that hill. I think the next shapes we should look at are maybe these leaves up in this tree right here. We're going to have them being fairly cool too. Let's add a little bit of this ochre. Just a tad bit of red. Let's go ahead. It's going to be fairly dark and fairly warm, all things considered. Remember precision. The values have to read well together in your painting. No one's going to be looking at the photograph when you're done, unless you're making a YouTube video. So we'll add a lot of yellow and a lot of red into it. There we go. I think that's about the right value that I want to go with. So we'll go ahead and try it, see how it works. Okay, and then inside that shape, it's going to get a lot cooler. Now it's gonna go real cool. That is cooler because of the snow bank directly above it. Typically, the value of a reflection will shift towards the middle value range slightly compared to what it is that it's reflecting. Go ahead and add in some color up here to those shapes. Go ahead and put a little bit right there on the edge of those as well. Okay, now this has to go a level lighter than I already had. And because it is going to be reflecting the sky almost solely at an angle, it's going to be a lot more blue than the snow that is facing directly upward and reflecting a little bit of that, that background shape. You're going to notice that I don't typically mess with edges much during this phase of the painting. During this stage, it is more about getting nice shapes. Form is of lesser importance here as well. Later on, you will put form on top of these shapes. If you're doing a regular block in, it will take you a bit longer to refine them, and that's why I like to start here with some of my paintings. So let's re-establish some of that pool of color. I want to add a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow to it, and then maybe lighten it slightly for this shape right here, and then come back and make it slightly darker. There you go. Now, right here, be cool. That little pocket of snow is darker because of the plane angle and the shape surrounding it. Now, 
we're going to start putting in those background shapes. Some artists have a hard time reconciling warm backgrounds with cool foregrounds. It can be a difficult thing to navigate, but shouldn't be something you refuse to do because you're cutting yourself off from interesting effects. It is best done through trial and error, and then correcting that color, which is what I'm about to do. Oh, that's way too much. And you will see me do it again here in a second up in the top left hand corner. If you are painting thin like I am here, it's simple enough to paint over top of what I've already laid down. Also, part of painting in these initial type block-ins is the notion that you don't have to cover every bit of canvas. There are a lot of areas that are left with a little bit of that underlying tone showing through. Now that can be a problem when you're using a white canvas, but if you lay down an initial tone or are using an already used canvas, it's not a problem. You know what, let's just go ahead and take that color all the way up to the edge. All right, now we're gonna block in that sky. And that sky is going to be fairly warm compared to that really cool foreground. So it's going to be a good chunk of white, a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow. Let's see how that works. That's way too light, way too light, way too cool because it's so white. That's a little better. Maybe it shouldn't be that strong of an edge up there. The edge between sky and landscape is almost always going to be the strongest edge in a painting. So try and soften it with a subtle value or color shift. All right, that is a really nice block in. Oh, whoa, 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 we got one more thing. One more thing before we call it uh, finished with the block in. We gotta put in that little bit of snow that's lit up down here. And it looks, in the image I'm going off of, really, really warm and yellow. So let's shift it a little more towards the, the red. I don't really want a bunch of yellow snow back there. So here we go. There we go. That is nice. I like that a lot and that will act as a base for this. Now that you know how to do secondary shape block-in, I can help you with other complex scenes right here. Keep painting.